What's going on, peeps? Now, you guys have surprised me a couple of times in the past, but there have been few cases that have surprised me more so than the outcome of this vote. I gave you options like everybody's tikka masala and coffee cake, but nope. You guys chose Tasty's 2 minute, 20 minute, and 2 day dumplings. Usually, I have a good pulse on what you guys want me to do and what's going to win these polls, but this genuinely shocked me. I was more surprised than when I saw some of the TikTok chefs being able to make a decent YouTube channel. But that's what you guys voted for, and everything in this video looks delicious, so I will be happy to oblige. Let's get right into this one. I figured I would test these out in the very same order that they're presented in the Tasty video, so the two minute dumplings are up first. You will need some soy sauce and black vinegar, kosher salt and hoisin sauce, some mushrooms, cornstarch, chili oil, and sesame oil, some square dumpling wrappers and fresh chives, fresh cilantro, and a big old head of Napa cabbage. Now I hate to be a Debbie Downer while we're starting the cooking segments, but once again, this is a case of having no recipe. There's no measurements in the video, in the description, in the comments, on their website, so we're just gonna have to wing this one. I don't mind doing this now, I kinda have a pretty decent sense of how much of everything to to add. Uh, it just sucks for you guys because I don't even really know exactly how much of all these ingredients I'm using. So what we're really going to be focusing on today is like the difficulty of each one of these and then the combination, how well all the ingredients go together and maybe even the texture. Because unfortunately, I can almost guarantee anybody who tries to replicate this video based on how it looks, they're all going to taste different. Also, I already feel like the world's worst complaining Karen, but where is the two minute part of this dumpling recipe? You've gotta hand stuff each one of these little dumpling wrappers. They get microwaved and then finished with a little sauce of black vinegar, soy sauce, and chili oil. This entire process probably took me like closer to an hour than it did two minutes. Like, you guys can call me out if I'm complaining too much already, but that title seems a little bit silly. The only real issue I had while making these was that the filling was very juicy. I had to strain the filling in a fine mesh strainer so it wouldn't leak out of my dumpling wrappers. And while they cooked in the microwave, one of them bursted and kind of made a mess of the whole bowl. Besides all that complaining and rambling I just did, these came out decent. They don't really look the prettiest, but when you dump the sauce on it, it looks okay. And it is finally time to give dumpling number one a shot. Well, I guess it's a good thing that Jasmine elected to pour the sauce over the dumplings. I almost called them wontons. Mm. Well, they taste great, as expected. I like basically everything in here. The filling is really tasty. I love the chili heat from the oil kind of on your lips afterwards. The wraps got a little bit gummy. I don't know if I overcooked them in the microwave or that's kind of the nature of microwaving dumplings. But for a really quick and simple homemade dumpling, uh, I don't hate it. I'd recommend you give it a shot. I do think there is quite a bit of room for improvement though. Second, we've got the 20 minute dumplings, which again, I think is a low ball estimate on how long it's gonna take me. But you will need some soy sauce and shushing wine dark soy sauce and flour, green onions, kosher salt, cornstarch, sesame oil, chili oil, sesame seeds and low sodium soy sauce, black vinegar, round dumpling wrappers, brown sugar, some ground pork, fresh ginger, an egg, and more Napa cabbage. Now pretty much everything in this version from ingredients to method, even to the shape that we're gonna end up forming our little dumplings into is kind of what comes to my mind first when somebody says the word dumpling. It's got that basic pork and cabbage filling that's loaded with different seasonings, different kinds of soy sauces and a few binders, that being the half of an egg and some cornstarch. This crimping Technique was new to me. It's basically like a triple pleat on both sides, which I still think I did wrong But I think they ended up looking pretty good and pretty uniform and then they get finished in a nonstick pan At first with some oil to get a nice crispy brown crust on the bottom and then right in that same pan with a little bit of water to steam them until they are all the way cooked through yeah, I'd say the timing of this one and the last one is 
nearly identical. Like, they both took me over an hour. The only extra time with this one was the cooking time in the pan versus the microwave. And the dipping sauce for this one is a little bit different. It's got low sodium soy sauce, it's got some brown sugar and freshly grated ginger, and I plated it up basically the same way with some scallions and the sauce, and it is time to try recipe number two. Okay, round two. These actually look and very much smell eerily similar to the ones that we order from the Chinese restaurant that's like five minutes from my house. Except I think they call them gyoza or something similar. Mmm. That crunch. So unfortunately for the last ones, these aren't even comparable. They're not even in the same ballpark. The little, um... Crunchy bottom texture is so damn good. The middle is like cooked perfectly. It's not overcooked, like it's not tough or anything, but it's well seasoned through. I also think I prefer them just on their own. They're so flavorful already. And I feel like any bad dumpling you can dip in this and it would taste amazing. But these are so good as is. Yeah, I cannot recommend these enough. Jasmine was correct when she asked everybody to pause filming so she can eat the rest of them, cause I might have to do the same. Rounding out today's video are the marathon dumplings, otherwise known as the two-day soup dumplings. And I gathered together some soy sauce and sake, some sugar and flour, ground pork and chili oil, fresh ginger, whole black peppercorns, pork skin and kosher salt, black vinegar, lots of water, pork neck pieces, toasted sesame oil, napa cabbage, and then because I'm stupid and forgot to include it, the crab paste. Now, I am not a very squeamish person. I can handle most, if not all, gross things. But holy hell did this shit stink. I have never dealt with pork skin before, so at first I just assumed that this was par for the course when working with this ingredient. But no exaggeration, I full on retched whenever I got a whiff of this. It smelt like straight up rotten human flesh. As you can see, I refused to boil this inside and stink up my entire house like it. I checked the package, this was well within the cell date. I just bought it like a day and a half ago. I just don't know, but after boiling this, it smelled even worse and I just can't do it. Somebody confirm if pork skin is supposed to smell like rotten carcass or not. But there was flies all over the damn pot out there. My neighbors were giving me looks, so I just couldn't do it. I got it as far away as I possibly could and I'll just sprinkle like a quarter teaspoon of unflavored gelatin to help this soup set up. And they're basically the same thing anyway, so it'll work just fine. As for the rest of this, you may be asking yourself what could possibly take two days to make a single dumpling. And you could probably get away with doing this in one day. I almost did. But we are obviously making the soup base from scratch. You gotta whip together another version of the pork filling that will go inside this at the end. And then, for the first time today, we are not using store-bought dumpling wrappers because why save yourself a headache and a mess in your kitchen when you could buy something that'll probably taste the same when you can make it. You know what? I shouldn't say that because when I made Joshua Weissman's homemade tortilla with the salt and the pork fat, that was like one of the best things I've ever made. So maybe this will make a difference. The jury is still out. A little side note, since there are still no measurements for any of this stuff, if you want to make these wrappers yourself, I used a 3 to 1 ratio of flour to water. That ended up being pretty close to perfect. I sprinkled a little bit more flour if it got sticky. And while I roll out all the wrappers and then stuff them up and make them look like cute little bows, uh, let's just have a little chat. I cannot believe summer's almost over. I am very sorry if you're headed back to school. I feel like I was just doing an end of school speech. I also can't believe that it's almost spooky season and I've had to start planning for October. Of course, the pumpkin spice madness is on its way. How could I ever miss it? It's just kind of mind blowing that I've already had to start planning. I feel like it just ended. If anybody else out there feels like time is fake and somebody is purposely speeding it up on us to mess with our brains, uh, leave it down in the comments so I won't feel that alone. I never thought I could say this, but I have now spent two days, three different dumpling recipes. Let's see how the third and final one stacks up. When I first pulled that lid off, I thought something went terribly wrong. Uh, I forgot that there's very 
orange colored crab oil on the top of this. But I think it makes them look pretty cool. It's certainly something I've never seen before. This is interesting. I didn't think I would need or even want the sauces on the side because she didn't make a sauce. She just kind of like had soy sauce and vinegar on the side. I'm finding myself wanting something else or something to dip it in with these. It could be a case of me getting the measurements and the ratios wrong of the seasoning in the pork. But they're a little bit bland and I don't really love how uh, the pork inside kind of formed this like puck of very slightly overcooked ground pork. I did the eight minutes that she said. The wraps are good. I don't know if they're really worth making. They're kind of almost exactly the same as the last two. And my favorite part is the crab by far. The addition of that seafoody kind of oil that's coating everything. I went very light with it because I thought it would be potent, but I found myself wanting more of that too. I don't know. Maybe with some adjustments, I could see these being the best, but I definitely missed the crispy bottoms on the last one. I missed that homemade dipping sauce we made with 10 different things. So I think it's safe to say that the 20 minute dumplings are the clear favorites out of this one. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave me a big old like. Question for you. If there was any one recipe that you'd wanna see my version of, my variation, something I might have made on the channel in the past or just mentioned in passing somewhere, uh, leave that down in the comments for me because that series is coming very soon. I know I keep saying it, but I promise it is coming. Uh, follow me over on Twitter and Instagram if you do not already. And other than that, have a fantastic weekend and I'll see you right back here next time. Peace. With the M, M without the A, D With the burgers and my money, super lazy Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me Try and supersize my life with my A-team Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision